So, um, yeah, look, it seems to work. Uh, so, uh, hello, everybody. Uh, fantastic company, fantastic conference. Uh, I'm going to go quickly because uh, we have uh, not so much time and we want to also discuss. I just want to say by way of introduction, uh, I run something called the Trans Lab at uh, uh, the Media Arts and Technology Program at UCSB. It's a, it's a lab for studying transformation that leads to speciation and uh, world making and uh, recuperating the lost whole. Uh, it, there's much more to it, but if you go online, uh, you'll, you'll see it much better than I can possibly um, describe it right now. Affiliated with that, uh, I'll show you a couple of things first before I go into my proper keynote presentation just for the sake of uh, uh, brevity. So affiliated with that lab is a facility called the Allosphere, which is uh, a four-story high anechoic chamber with a th three-story high sphere for the projection of virtual environments with sensors and trackers and whatever devices you would like. Uh, just very quickly, just to give you a flavor, and if you have your uh, um, uh, cardboard, you can actually uh, try this. But we're inside this uh, sphere, and we can look around. This is, this is a very bright scene, but this gives you a sense of the, the space. You can, if I zoom out, uh, there's the bridge. And there are people on it, and we're watching a, a composition that's uh, sonic and uh, um, spatial and everything at once. Uh, to give you a, a second flavor of it uh, as it appears, um, we could go here. And this is a, a view of the place. As I said, if you wear your glasses, you can, you can go in there. And we do all sorts of things that uh, combine science and art and technology and the humanities and mathematics and engineering and everything that we can, we can put together. Um, I can't possibly do this any justice, so I'll just point at it. There's a huge facility in Santa Barbara. You're all welcome. And so from there, what I'd like to do is just jump into these slides and um, bring this to another kind of... Uh, uh, description, which has to do with the, the overall conference and this particular session, which has to do with the future of VR, and try to maybe pull together some of the aspects that, uh, that I think have been hovering around and I'm sure we'll hear more of because all the work here is uh, superb. Uh, so everyone has these intuitions for all of these uh, kinds of things that we're interested in. So a little bit about my presence here apart from, the, from what I'm doing now. Uh, Right now, I'll talk to you about these things called transvergence and world making and this weird way of, sp of saying VR with AI in the middle. You might pronounce it ver, it'll rhyme with something later, and then worlds. Um, uh, my involvement with this goes back a very long time. The briefest way to describe it is through, M through three MIT Press books, uh, Cyberspace First Steps, Immersed in Technology, and another one I'll show you in a minute. Uh, I got into it as an undergraduate back in 79, before it even existed, and I was composing things for this space that had no name, while well, apparently William Gibson was giving it a name. And so Michael Benedict and I organized the first international conference on cyberspace in 1990, and between 90 and 94, I was building virtual worlds at the Banff Center in the Art and Virtual Environments Project with Brenda Laurel and Michael Neumark that you heard about, and Scott Fisher and all sorts of other people, and uh, also being in touch with Bill Mitchell, who used to be uh, here in the School of Architecture and the Media Lab. <coughs> um, the point of this seemed to be to, um, you know, we're on Galileo, uh, Galilei Way, or Galileo Galilei Way is, uh, is a block away. Um, and that's, a, that's a, a good way to understand that if you have a telescope and you point it at your shoes, you're going to see a blurry pair of shoes. You have to point it at the stars to make it useful. If you have a technology like this, the point of it is not to see what you know, but to see what you couldn't possibly see without it. And as you've heard, it has something to do with being there, with agency and transmitting your agency. So um, there's a series of delaminations, the de delamination of the self, the delamination of location, of passage, and, and various such dislocations, which you have to put in the context of uh, narrative and the idea of the suspension of disbelief that we know from all the media until now, uh, now amplified to all these other modalities. So an artwork that is not vestigial in the McLuhan kind of sense would be one that would 
uh, embrace these dislocations and express themselves, pretty much like Denise uh, was talking about <coughs> um, earlier uh, this morning. Uh, those were two of the books. Another book that, that has to do with this work, uh, which was already in, the, in, the, in something called Dancing with the Virtual Dervish, one of the very first VR pieces, um, uh, had to do with uh, going to the fourth dimension. And so I built, uh, way back when, uh, a world that at the time was the first, still is, I guess, um, the first immersive experience of the fourth dimension. And though it was of this other world that you couldn't see without the technology, there were these remnants, these anchors that tied it back to the things we would like to avoid in this world. Uh, scenes of catastrophe, uh, torture, injustice, human rights, all these kinds of issues that were somehow embedded in a very strange uh, and scientific and uh, abstract world. The abstract and the concrete together. Uh, we'll come back to this image at the end. It's kind of the summary. World making habitable cinema, some of the, the terms and then share, there, pair, fair, ver, if you want to pronounce it that way, but something about all of that with VR and AI. Okay, um, one way to get into this is to, to, to uh, understand that it has to do with agency in another world, but with making that agency articulate to say something meaningful. So the way to understand that might be uh, to construct a situation whereby a person can go to another place and occupy that place in a way that uh, allows more than one meaning from it. Not just for, ex as, uh, uh, this isn't cr at all critical of the work that we've seen. So what we saw with enemy is brilliant and Syria is brilliant, but they, the dislocation there is from outside to inside the virtual world. Uh, what I'm trying to point to is a situation where someone is inside in the same place, same environment, but, th but their perception produces uh, a consequential difference. So we're both in this room, but we take from it something different. How do I construct a narrative whereby we're in the same place, but we come to very different conclusions? Um, this story is going to connect us to the present, th the real present, and wind its way back to something which is a kind of pivotal difference and some articulations. Okay, so the story of our present now has something to do with Vienna. And by the present, I mean this date, the, the thing that's on the news in the United States, these elections in Europe, the EU, and, and, and Varoufakis and Chomsky, and these things. So Vienna, city of culture, city of music, city of architecture, also though, city uh, of Nazi Germany uh, at that particular time. So what does that have to do with anything? <coughs> um, the election right now, if you're watching the news, seems to be between Trump and non-Trump, whoever that may be, in, you know. Uh, and in, in, in one particular case with Bernie, it seems to be capitalism and socialism. But I, I'm, I'm choosing to tell the story through book covers because everything I say is really a book cover, and you really, to understand it all, you would need, read, need to read the books, and I can't tell you about them. But these are pivotal books uh, that both come out of, of a particular reaction to Vienna and to uh, things earlier in the century that are being played out now. Uh, the ideologies that are involved in them come from uh, this particular book, for example, by Ludwig von Mises, called Human, called Human Action, A Treatise on Economics, whose conclusion is more or less fast, cheap, and out of control, because that's the only way we can do, because meaning doesn't exist. The only thing that exists is monetary value, and we leave it at that. That particular attitude is built up by the collaborator of Mises, Hayek, in a book called The Road to, Road to Serfdom, which tries to persuade the reader that the only sort of meaning that can be had is economic, and every other attempt to do anything together will lead to serfdom. Like, you either uh, embrace the market or you go back to serfdom. That's actually the, the, the book list of the ideologies that are at play right now. Uh, both he and Mises are Viennese, and they're responding explicitly to their experience of Vienna and, uh, and the Second World War. So they're trying to avoid the Second World War, which, of course, is a reasonable thing. But it's a particular reaction. Another person, also Viennese, who responds to the very same thing is 
uh, Viktor Frankl, who's a psychologist, psychotherapist, psychiatrist, who writes a book, Man's Search for Meaning. Uh, he uh, winds up being in the concentration camps. He loses his parents. He loses his wife. He almost dies. He survives. He writes this book. It becomes a huge hit. He, you know, he starts a school of psychology uh, called logotherapy. And his conclusion of the same situation is not that one should become selfish, but that one can only solve things by love. So same environment, very different conclusions playing out to, let's say, socialism and let's say capitalism. <clears throat> now, that's just set up because what's interesting is if you study this, you come into an articulation of meaning. It, you come into uh, what's called existential uh, psychotherapy and these four worlds, the Umwelt, the Mitwelt, uh, the Eigenwelt, and the Uberwelt. And we've seen examples of these things. So the Umwelt is the, the, the world of a creature as it knows itself. It might be flocking, it might be uh, looking through animal eyes. Sorry, um, I'm, I'm speaking too fast and I'm uh, uh, digesting my lunch, which I ate too fast as well. <laughs> uh, but, but I'll be fine. <laughs> So, um, so the Umwelt is the world of the creature uh, as you might see it. And that's an interesting world to explore, and we've seen some of that. How, how does the world look to, to another creature? The Mitwelt, which happens to fit MIT, uh, and there's the sign, Galileo Galilei Way, is the world with others, the social world. And we've seen examples of the social world. Um, the Eigenwelt is the, the world of the self. And here, the illustration is from a VR project where I had my fMRI uh, taken of my brain, and I made a virtual world. And if you come to Santa Barbara, you can, you can fly through it. But that's just a picture. What's really the issue is the world that we construct for the self. These are three important things, and we've seen examples of them. But the conclusion of it is finally that everyone has an Uberwelt, and I don't mean taxis. Uh, and by, by Uberwelt, is meant whatever one would call, uh, it doesn't have to be religious, it doesn't have to be, it can be or it can't be, as, as you wish, but it, it's what we would call spiritual or something. Um, so in the, in the early world works that I made, I was aiming for four-dimensional geometries and a kind of platonic ideal world, the places that I couldn't reach, uh, then realizing that there was something that needed to be addressed in the actual world, and so retreating. Um, and, and still wanting to go to this abstract cloud of musical world, whatever you feel, that's blank intentionally, so you can project upon it, uh, whatever your uber world of uh, wealth might be. Um, but the, the proposition basically here uh, winds up being that we're making a kind of habitable cinema, whether you want to say cinema or kinematic uh, cinema, cinema is already that word. Uh, it, you need to have a place to share, that you, a, a spatial conception you want to share, you have to build it so that there is a there there that someone can actually explore, that they have agency there. You need to let them uh, uh, pair. They, they need to connect uh, with, uh, with others and to be able to shift their identity to the position of all the parties that might be involved, not just uh, outside, inside, but inside to take on different identities. It needs to be fair, as we heard with the questions about the democratization. But then finally it lands here where and this is the strangest part, and I'll, I'll just allude to it, where we're actually doing something very strange. So for example, we're build, building autonomous cars. We've got Google autonomous cars and, and uh, deep mind and inceptionism and the possibility of substituting reality. And the cars to do that have to be ro uh, very smart. And basically this other, which will have these four worlds, may well be a robot and may well be an AI. And it may be that your car is a display that is alive, that is communicating with other displays, and all of these things are actually part of the same uh, massive uh, soup, which is this, this uh, cluster of possibilities. And that's where I stop, and the rest is covered.